What's up guys, I'm over in the EDM department and today I've got a very interesting project. We're gonna be cutting an electrode out of graphite that's 50 thousandths wide. Now this is the same material that's used inside of pencils every single day. After we do that, we're gonna take it over to our sinker EDM. We're gonna burn a pocket with square internal corners two inches deep into a piece of hardened 420 stainless steel. For those of you not EDM folks, this is essentially like taking a pencil tip and plunging it into a piece of steel two inches deep. All right, so let's get it set up. Boom. <laughs> so first things first, we're gonna install our adapter plate from Aroa, and then we're gonna indicate this surface in parallel with our Y axis so that we can bolt our quick chuck to this adapter plate. I'm only gonna tighten down one side for now. It's gonna give me a pivot point so I can indicate this surface. Not bad for a Monday. All right, we went ahead and indicated everything in within a tenth. We're gonna go ahead and tighten down our bolts, and then we're gonna check it one more time to make sure nothing moved when we tighten down our bolts. All right, we're happy with that, so we're gonna go ahead and take our indicator off, and then we're gonna install our Eroa Quick Chuck onto our adapter plate. What this is gonna do is it's gonna hold our electrode holder and our graphite suspended out into the EDM tank so that we can cut the profile of our electrode. Now we absolutely love sharing free education with all of you. We just released a Titans of CNC Grinding Academy. To access that, go to grindingacademy.com. You can watch hundreds of free tutorials, learn all about the world of CNC grinding and take your career to the next level. So now we've installed our graphite blank into our electrode holder. One thing to pay attention to is our graphite actually isn't sitting in the center of our holder. You can see we have a gap here and we also have a gap here so we can't pick up off our electrode because then it's going to be offset how much it's offset in the holder so we're going to put this into our fixture we're going to find our y center point so that this is cut on center with our holder so i just removed our ground standard that we used to find our y position I just installed our graphite electrode into our holder and we're going to touch off on the end of that to find our X location. So our wire just touched off on the front face of our electrode blank. Instead of setting X to zero, we're going to set it to X of positive 55 thousandths. That will make sure that we cut into our blank by 50 thousandths when we run our program, plus 5 thousandths for half the diameter of our wire. All right guys, our setup is complete. That's enough talking. Let's hit start and cut some graphite. All right guys, so our first operation is complete and our machine has moved to the next thread point and stopped. At this point, we're gonna pull out our slug that was cut off during our first operation. And we're also going to index our electrode holder in our quick chuck for the next stop. Now, the only reason we can do that is because we're working off the center of our electrode holder. So we can index at 90 degrees and we'll still be on location perfectly. All right guys, so our roughing electrode is finished. As you can see, it's a very, very narrow rib electrode. This would be really difficult to manufacture on a mill or on a grinder. You need diamond coated tools, might create a lot of dust. With the EDM, we get to remove all those factors. I wanted to take a second to talk to you guys about the programming strategy behind how we cut our electrode. This slug was essentially attached just like this before it was cut.
cut. Now, when we cut this, we started from this side of our electrode and cut in this direction and out. The reason we did that is because when our slug is attached, if we were to cut from this direction and out, graphite is very brittle. What could have happened is as we cut, our slug might wanna try and do this, and then right at the end, it's gonna wanna break off. And that would leave a little bit of a chip right at the tip of our electrode, which we can't have. To fix that, we came from this direction, and now if it chips, it'll chip down at this portion of the electrode, which really doesn't matter at all. For this berm, we're gonna need two electrodes. So this is only our roughing electrode. I'm gonna load another piece of graphite into our fixture and cut our finishing electrode, and then we'll head over to the sinker and we'll set up for our burn. All right, so our finishing electrode is done. We now have a rougher and a finisher. I can't stress to you guys enough how impressive this is. This is 50 thousandths wide graphite, which is the same material that's used in pencils. And I know you guys know how easy it is to break a pencil. We're gonna take this, and we're gonna burn it into this hardened piece of 420 stainless steel. We're gonna go two inches deep. It's gonna be insane. So let's go over to the sinker and make it happen. So we probed our workpiece and we found the center point of that. Now we're using our head probe to probe the center point of our table probe. What that's gonna tell us is the exact center of our C-axis. After that, we're gonna load each electrode in and we're gonna probe the square pad around the top of the electrode. And it's gonna give us the difference between the center line of our C-axis and the center line of our electrode. first electrode goes all the way down into our pocket. It's very narrow and it's a very deep burn. So the electrode's gonna wear throughout that entire process. So we're gonna come in with that second finishing electrode and we're gonna use that to sharpen up those corners, make everything nice and crisp and perfect. For this burn, we're using a 10 thousandths per side spark gap. Now we're executing this burn with no additional flushing. As that electrode gets deeper and deeper into the pocket, it's gonna become more and more difficult to evacuate the swarf created during the burn. And that's where the 700 inches per minute retract of our Z-axis is important. What that's gonna do is it's gonna help pull that fluid out and pull that swarf out, as well as when it enters the cavity rapidly, it helps push all that EDM swarf out of our pocket so it's clear for the next burn. We don't have any short circuits or buildup of our EDM swarf. Now this is what we call a rib burn or a rib feature. What that means is in injection mold making, it's very common to have molded parts that have ribs around them to reinforce the strength of that part. But in order to do that, you have to have a rib slot burned into your mold insert. All right guys, so our burn just finished up. The internal corners look nice and sharp and the wear on our electrode appears to be very minimal. But I'm really anxious to see what the inside of our part looks like, so I'm gonna break this vise loose and show you guys how it turned out. As you can see, our rib electrode burned two inches deep into these pieces of heat treated 420 stainless steel. And to me, the results speak for themselves. I mean, 
This is crisp. Look at the sharp internal corners. We finished it with a 24 VDI on the surface. Very happy with how our Iris 6 Sinker EDM performed. This is exactly the result we were hoping for. It just goes to show in manufacturing, you can do absolutely anything if you have the right technology and the right equipment. So to be able to burn a 50 thousandths wide blind pocket into 420 stainless steel that's been heat treated to 45 Rockwell is absolutely amazing. Our sinker handled it with no flushing absolutely beautifully. The results speak for themselves. The other day, we got this pallet in from Shunk. It's an absolutely massive electromagnetic chuck. Check this out. We're gonna be installing this magnet on our Iris 6 Sinker EDM in an upcoming video. You don't wanna miss that. It's gonna be awesome. If you like what we're doing, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys next time.